That's true, I forgot, sorry. <laughs> Apologies. First of all, you haven't been in WABC before, right? No, You've no. had a lot of things, but this is a first, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think good. So, I believe so. What do you think of Stage 17, our new space? It's pretty nice in here. Yeah, <laughs> good-looking crowd, right? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Look, you got some beautiful blondes in the front there. You can't go wrong. <laughs> oh, Bart and Julian are going to fight over you guys. I don't blame them. Um, before I forget, too, on Saturday, everybody, um, you have a book signing, both of you guys, at Barnes & Noble at Union Square, and it's at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Of course, it's open to the public, so make sure that you tell all your friends to come on out. Um, and the book already, I was looking last night, it was like, on all the bestseller, there's a lot of bestseller lists, so like kids, environment. Um, and before we get started, the sure. first thing I want to ask you, and I think it's so amazing, the history. Yeah. You give back, part of the proceeds from the book go to the White Feather Foundation. Yeah. yeah. This is something near and dear to you, and I want to hear about how it all started. OK. Um, it's a long story. You, OK? I think they're <laughs> OK. This one? Yeah, it's a beautiful um, story. Yeah, everything I do, uh, a proportion of what I earn goes back to the White Feather Foundation. Um, it came about because of a number of reasons. Um, initially, many, many, many moons ago, uh, on the rare occasion that I did actually get to see Dad, he, he mentioned to me that uh, should something happen to him, um, uh, that he would pass, that uh, he would let me know that he was going to be all right, or that we'd all be all right, in fact, uh, but in the form of a white feather. And I thought that was a bit of a crazy idea, crazy concept at the time, and thought, well, you know, okay, right, I'll go with it. And 20 years ago, I was uh, on tour in Australia, and um, I was at a hotel in Adelaide, and I got a phone call from the manager of the hotel, who said, uh, excuse me, Mr. Lennon, uh, you have a, uh, a group of people down here, uh, about 40 or 50 people, and an Aboriginal tribe and a film crew. And I said, you're joking, right? And he said, no, 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 uh, what would you like us to do? They'd like you to come downstairs and meet them. So, um, I'm pretty quiet, uh, pretty shy, and uh, was very shy back then. And so I decided to go down, but I was very nervous about this, because I didn't know what it was about. And I, I, I get, out, get out of the elevator and I see a group of about 50 people. And, uh, in, uh, and they're gathered in, in a sort of semicircle circle. And the, the elder of the indigenous tribe was a lady. Um, and she, she walked up to me into, in the middle of the circle with this incredibly beautiful white feather from a, a, a male swan. And it's, it's, it's a pretty large feather, so you, you can't miss it. And, and uh, number one, that freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's a sign, you know. Um, uh, and and uh, you know, I, I mean, goosebumps through the roof. I I didn't know really what to make of it until she said, "Listen, you know, you have a voice. Can you help us?" And at that point in time, I thought, well, you know, do I continue just being a rock and roller, or do I actually step up to the plate? And I'd known a little bit about the indigenous tribes' plight in Australia and how they'd been dealt with and treated. And, you know, I, I, I stepped up to the plate and I spent 10 years making a documentary film about them called Whale Dreamers, uh, which I'm happy to say won a couple of uh, independent film awards. But uh, beyond that, the idea for me was that I if it did well in any way, shape or form, that I'd want to give whatever profits were made directly back to the indigenous tribe who were called the Murning people, um, so that they could protect and keep their culture alive in the future. Um, and, and I found out the only way that we could do that, at least at that stage, was uh, via a foundation. So the director and I of, of, the, of the film project, you know, threw ideas back and forth until we finally came up with the name uh, the White Feather Foundation. Now, initially, it was used just as a vehicle, um, you know, to get any profits through through to them. Um, and I, I thought, okay, well, that's it. That's 10 years of my life. Uh, I think I've done something nice. Uh, now what? And then I, I, I decided to, you know, social media was coming into play, so built the website for the 
for the foundation. And all of a sudden, I'm getting bombarded with, you know, emails and letters, etc. Just, you know, with other causes saying, can you help us? Can you help us? And it, it became overwhelming uh, until I, I realized that I just needed to focus on what mattered to me, that w what I was passionate about, and how I could help. And so we, the, the idea came down to, the, to um, a few points, a few issues that I, I care deeply about. Number one being clean water. It's everybody's right to drink, to be able to have clean water, to live, to live, to survive, you know, uh, and clean oceans too. Uh, you know, and uh, health and education, obviously, that's crucial. And, um, and uh, protection uh, of uh, indigenous tribes and their rights and their culture. Uh, so those, those are just a, a few of the things that we do. Now you've done a